Okay, this video is about bipolar disorder and lithium. Again, we're gonna especially go by this book, Brain Disabling Treatments in Psychiatry by Peter Bregan, because it's the best pharmacology book. Um, we'll also go through this book a bit, Drug-Induced Dementia by Grace Jackson. She's a psychiatrist. Uh, they're both real good. She's better for um, going through the papers with regard to the brain damage visible at pathology, as well as with imaging. Um, his book is more of a specific to the pharmacology of it. Anyways, um, lithium is Li+. Plus. It's a positive charge, very much like sodium, but it's smaller than sodium. can interfere with some of the things that sodium does in the human body. Sodium in the human body is, of course, ubiquitous. It's everywhere. So lithium can have all kinds of strange effects. It's not very well understood. Um, and it's totally non-selective. This idea of, oh, you've got a uh, manic episode and lithium specifically treats it, that's ridiculous. It, it causes effects all over the body, and um, it's much more toxic than is widely recognized. When it's injected into lab animals, it'll cause lethargy, unresponsiveness, um, indifference, suppression of voluntary, exploratory, spontaneous activity, um, and, you know, this is very much like a lot of other psychotic medicine, um, excuse me, psychiatric medications, including antipsychotics, neuroleptics, antidepressants, benzodiazepines, and electroconvulsive shock. It causes a form of a lobotomy. The more you study psychiatric medicines, and I just sort of on a whim decided to read about them extensively because I was trying to understand excitotoxicity in the hippocampus. And I was just like, oh my goodness, they're so bad. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that they were profitable, I don't think anyone would want anything to do with these medications. That's how bad they are. Um, are there some people who've noticed a positive response? There are some people who claim they have had a positive response, but there's tons and tons long-term with bad side effects. Um, there is a very famous lady, Kay Redfield Jameson, who was a writer, and she wrote a book called Touched by Fire, and she claims that lithium has been helpful to her over the long haul with her condition. Um, it causes something called a spellbinding effect. Spellbinding effect means that when the person's taking the medicine, they lose insight upon themselves, like the Dunning-Kruger effect, whereby a person can't recognize their own incompetence, but their family members will notice that they've had a, you know, a significant major neurologic deterioration. To the family and friends, it's obvious. Um, things like memory impairment and whatnot. Um, some of the side effects with normal volunteers are the same things we're talking about, confusion, muscle weakness, discoordination, um, delayed reaction time, lower IQ. And the reason I mention all that is because there's sometimes a claim that, oh, it just treats manic. Not at all true. It's not just treating the patients who are sick. It also has a major effect on normal volunteers. These are, and as, as Bregan will say, it's the brain damaging effect that's a therapeutic effect, shutting down the brain. It does it in a different way than the neuroleptics. It does it in a different way than the benzodiazepines. But it's still an effect to shut down the brain, which is harmful to cognitive function in the long run. Um, and, you know, some people have said, well, sometimes writers will have hypomanic phases or other creative artistic people, or that's when they do their best work. And she specifically, you know, talked about how this is from Kay Redfield Jameson. I think she was a, she a physician as well. She said, I compare myself with my former self, and I'm at my best when mildly manic. My liveliest, most productive, most outgoing, and effervescent self. And so, you know, having increased energy might be advantageous if you're trying to be a creative artist, uh, but certainly the depression is not. Uh, lithium can cause hypothyroidism, so that's not good. Interfere with thyroid function. Can interfere with parathyroid gland function and cause hyperparathyroidism. It can cause damage to the kidneys. It can cause something called diabetes insipidus. So it can have a lot of major systemic effects far away from the brain. Um, in 1949, they tried to put lithium into this, uh, into, as a form of salt, like lithium chloride was used as a salt substitute in the hope that it would help treat hypertensive patients and it had some major side effects, including cause some deaths. So it's a serious thing. It's not some safe thing. I'm not aware of it having any beneficial purpose in the human body at all. Um, although lithium can cause what is called neurogenesis in the hippocampus, 
Uh, those neurons are not normal in appearance, according to Bragg. And again, I got all the page numbers on here. So these, you know, BDT, brain disabling, you can look it up from there. And then DID will be the drug-induced dementia book of Grace Jackson. You can look over there. So I wanted to make it so if anybody's really interested in this, they can very quickly find the good stuff. You know, like if you have a family or a friend who's taken this, you know, this might help them. They could read about it. You could read about it. Um, let's see. Frequency of patients presenting with mania has become much, much more common since uh, all these antidepressants and SSRIs are being prescribed since the 1980s. They first came out, the SSRIs, in about 1988. Um, Bragan says basically lithium is poisonous to brain cells. And that's kind of the general picture I've got from reading about all this psychiatric pharmacology. It's much more toxic to the brain in the long run than is widely recognized, including that stuff they give to the kids, especially the stimulants for attention deficit. You know, like, all right, so getting back, now this is Grace Jackson. This is her book, Drug-Induced Dementia, a very intelligent, clever book. Um, she talks about, in her opinion, lithium is more likely to cause mood instability than uh, prevent it. And she, you know, again mentions how it's talking to multiple organ systems in the human body um, and again the same old thing come up all the time with all these anti -psych all these psychiatric meds the longer a person takes them the more side effects they get and the more likely the side effects become irreversible uh, like we talked about with the neurotransmitter blocker and uh, accentuator type drugs they, they cause changes in the synapses what lithium actually does in the brain it is not clear and that's a dangerous thought too taking a drug when nobody knows what it's really doing it does damage the hippocampus. She showed several studies to that effect. It also damages the cerebellum, which can cause problems of coordination called ataxia. It can damage the brainstem, which is bad. That's where a lot of your major you know, autonomic um, control centers are. And um, it can also cause an essential tremor. And that's not a pleasant thing to have, and that's a pretty common thing. So anyways, um, side effects much worse than is widely recognized. Good to be aware of that. Hope it's helpful.